I'm Scott Schiller, and welcome to Team G503. And here we go. Before we get into the video, I have a special announcement to make. This video marks the 100th video we've made here for the Team G503 video series on YouTube. And that is a pretty monumental, cool thing there. We've been doing this for a little bit over a year. Got 100 videos, got a whole lot more to show you. In this one, I was thinking to myself, I said, okay, so we've got 100. Let's figure out something that's 100 on a Jeep. So we kind of do a play on words and 100th episode, 100 of this. I really couldn't think of anything there was 100 of until it hit me. Boom, just out of the blue, like a ton of bricks fell on me, a hundred. If you've ever restored one of these vehicles and you get to the tub and you're doing the body work, there is a hundred holes that you will have to fill with a MIG welder. Trust me when I say this, check it out. Some things to note before we get started here. I've already stripped all of the old paint off of this by means of paint stripper and grinding wheels and sandpaper. And then I primed it with the Barrier 3 uh, red oxide primer from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and that primer is weldable up to two mils So I won't have to remove the paint off of the primer side on the back side. I've got the metal cleaned and sanded A couple of tools that I want to show you real quick This is one that I made myself out of a half inch piece of plumbing copper pipe I just pounded the pipe flat and then I put a bend on either end so I could get behind things because the idea here is is the copper you're gonna set that copper behind that hole flush and flat and then you can weld this and the weld will not stick to the copper so this is just one that I made myself another thing you can use is an actual piece this is three quarter inch this is just plumbing copper tubing and you can get into radiuses with that and round areas where you couldn't with the flat stock and this is kind of the one the store-bought tool this is just a welding spoon and it's got a curve to it and I've used that quite a bit get it cleaned up there so you can see it is copper and the idea again is you're going to put that right flush behind the hole you're welding up and then the weld will not stick to that copper but it will stick to the sheet metal and fill the hole okay so basically again what i'm going to do is put that spoon up against the hole that i want to fill nice and tight like that so the weld doesn't stick to it and right there and then we're going to take the wire on the mig welder and then we're going to give it a nice short hot burst starting on this side of the metal and then work ourselves back this way to just fill in that hole. It's really simple actually, let's give it a go. And I didn't quite get him filled up, we still got a little spot right there. Just hit that real quick. Now we got it. You see how the hole is filled now? And you don't want to get too hot because you will warp the metal. But then what we can do is we can grind that off flush and flat and make it smooth. And as you see, I've got a bunch of holes to do, so I'm just going to get right at it. So we've got our hole welded here and we still raised up, it's cooled down now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my side grinder and it's just a DeWalt grinding pad. You can buy those at any hardware store. And then I'm going to grind off, I'll call it the, the rough grind, I'm going to grind off that weld and try to get it smooth. And then after I get it close to smooth, I'll go back with my soft pad and make it really nice. Okay, so we've got that pretty good, and I don't want to use this rough disc anymore, so I'm going to change out to this 80 grit soft pad, and then we'll finish that up. Okay, I've almost made it disappear. You can see just a little bit of a cut where the weld stuck to that and then you can grind the back side as well. But I wanna show you a trick. Now let's say you're working out here and it gets to be late or you gotta go for dinner, you gotta go someplace and you really don't wanna stop because, well geez, you know, I got this all done, I don't want to come back with the rust and I've still got these holes. Let me show you what to do. I'm gonna wipe this up a little bit, clean it up, just so there's no residue left there. And I ground that one off there too. The Barrier 3, red oxide primer, once again from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. 
just give it a shot. The rattle can makes it really, really handy to do this. Just give a little coat of the primer and then it won't flash rust back on you when, until you come back to the project. And again, this is weldable up to two mils and that is a fantastic thing. So I'm gonna give this a shot because I gotta get cleaned up and finish up this video. And they disappear. Now I'm gonna have to go back in here and touch this up with just a teeny bit with some body filler, but very, very minuscule. And again, I can come back again another time and I've still got a ton of holes to fill up, but that's not gonna flash rust on me while I'm gone. And there you have it. So basically you're gonna go around and you're gonna fill all those holes with that MIG welder and grind them all down and make them go away. And in the end, it'll be worth it because you kept the original body panels. I'd like to say a special thank you to Ron Fitzpatrick and Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Without you, this video series would not be possible, and it has been a fantastic journey. And we're getting there. We're getting about halfway there, and you'll see this come together. For those of you who like to follow along, you can subscribe to us here at Team G503. Just click the subscribe button there on the bottom of the screen, and click the notification button so you know when we got the new videos out. All right, my friends, thank you for watching. Until next time, keep it safe, and happy Jeeping.